everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another Falconry video. In this video I'm going to be talking about the pursuit of excellence versus the, the joy and the fun of falconry and what on earth that means. Now this is, uh, I do a lot of different videos you've seen, probably if you've seen my channel before, and I know they range all over the place from sort of a how-to video to spotlighting a species to comparing the different flight styles uh, to sometimes I get a bit philosophical. Um, this video in particular a friend encouraged me to make this video and asked me to actually, you know, I think about a year ago. Uh, his name is Steve. I did not ask him if I could use his name, but I don't mind because you know what? There's a billion Steves in my state of Utah that are falconers. So much so that when I was a kid getting into a falconry, every single falconer I met, like the first seven falconers I met were named Steve. I'm like, um, is there something I should know here? Like, well, it was kind of funny. But, um, he encouraged me, uh, we were having some talks and some about some philosophy, and he encouraged me to make this. So, uh, Steve, thank you for the suggestion, and I hope that uh, we can all benefit from discussing this topic. So I wanna talk about, first, people all over the world get into falconry for all different reasons. And I've talked about this in other videos, right? You might, uh, could be a range of things. It could be just a random love of the birds. You're captivated by birds of prey and you, you, you would love the opportunity to have a connection with one and to touch and have that bond. Uh, for some people it's, uh, ab about hunting. I know hunters who have been lifelong hunters and they're looking for a new form of hunting that is, is challenging and, and exciting. That you know, for some people, they're looking for a wilderness experience. Um, it, it can be so many different reasons, uh, some good, some bad. And then think about when you get into falconry. There's so many amazing firsts, and you you're you're on this fast track of just all this new information. I actually liken getting into falconry as to Harry Potter in the Harry Potter books. He's like, I'm living my life, doing my thing. And then suddenly he becomes aware of the wizarding world. And then suddenly everything is coming at him. He's like, oh, I'm going to Diagon Alley. And look, there's all these magical spells and you can ride a broom. Wait, there's a wizarding school I'm going to? I'm getting an owl? What? What? You mean all over the place? My whole life there's been witches and wizards hidden throughout my community and I didn't know it? Right next to me, hidden in plain sight, there's whole new vocabulary. There's dangers to watch for, opportunities to be had. There's competitions. Well, what? And it's just bleh. That's what it's like. If you've been a falconer, you you for a while you were aware just how much the normal folk out there are unaware of all that we do. So I bring that up just to remember that because that is what happens you come into this new world you have to learn a whole new language of falconry and terms and usage uh you have to learn you know i have to learn trapping you have to learn different flight styles you have to learn trades in a lot of countries like in the united states there's an apprenticeship you have to serve you have to get permits you have to all these things and it's thrilling the novelty the excitement it's just everything is new everything is amazing and everything you see maybe you got into it for falcons and you like me you're into peregrine falcons and then somebody takes you out to go see a goshawk hunting and actually you're like whoa this is totally different whoa and it opens your mind and then somebody takes you to see harris hawks and they're flying together like you got a pack of harris hawks a pack of birds are like flying velociraptors hunting together you're like whoa it's just, it's the most amazing thing. And then you get your first bird. Oh, you're like, oh, I'm doing this. And you're like, you, maybe you're in the Americas where you, we, we often will trap your first bird. You trap a red-tailed hawk or a kestrel and you, you're, you, you run up to the trap and here's this kestrel on a trap. And you're like, oh my goodness. I've done it. I've read all about trapping, the history of trapping. I've read the laws. I got my falconry permit, my trapping permit. Bam, I got a bird. It's sitting in your hand. You're like, I did. It's like if you study Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey, it's like this. It's like, I have done this great warrior deed. All the books have said this is done. I have studied the manuscripts and I have, you're just like, you're glowing. If you're a falconer who's been doing it for a while, think back to that. Think back to what, how miraculous it seemed. From the heavens, this bird came down to my simple trap I made with nooses and snares and a rat inside. And it was caught, and now it is in my hands, and now we will begin in this year. It's like a pillar of light. Just that's how you feel. Like a shaft from the heavens is coming down, shining upon you in this moment of of glory and amazement. Um, it, that's what it feels like at first. 
and then you start training him and you actually get this bird to eat off the fist you're like it's doing it look it was hesitating and now it's actually eating off the fist and then hopping to the fist flying to the fist flying outside on a leash a crayons flying free flying the first time coming to a lure then you're going out hunting well can they do this it's this bird and we've just been living our life and to so and then to have that bird to actually hunt and take wild game you're like i've done it no shaft of life again we've done it oh and it's so amazing and um it, it seems incredible and you keep going into this Harry Potter world of falconry and you, there's new species to learn. And, uh, you know, uh, you get into falconry young, like me, you're poor. You, and, and you, oh, so, you know, then someday you save up money and you buy a captive bred fill in the blank that you wouldn't have been able to. Or maybe, you know, in, in the United States, it's hard to get an eagle. There's a lot of paperwork and hoops you have to jump through. And you finally get your first eagle. And, Oh, wow, I'm, I'm actually training an eagle. And then that eagle actually takes prey. It's so exciting for you at first. But what happens is then people go into this mode of, of different ways, different things they do. They're pursuing excellence. Okay, now you know how to train a falcon. Okay, now you know how to hunt with a falcon. All right, I'm really going to push and, and learn the proper way to get them to wait on consistently at a very high pitch working under dogs. And maybe I'm going after a, a truly iconic species, like maybe sage grouse. Maybe you're like, I'm going to get a jeer peregrine, save up, get a jeer peregrine, and, and, and get a good flock of homing pigeons and train it and really do this really right and really fine tune my craft uh, and really get that, you know? You have that kind of thing. Or maybe you're like, uh, but we get, we get stuck in these cycles where when you're really good at something, that it, it, it can almost become work. It can almost become a chore. The novelty is gone. Even if you still enjoy the activity, the novelty can just disappear. How many people have we seen, good falconers, great falconers, seasoned, accomplished falconers that get pulled into like a rut? It's just almost like a rut. It's like, yeah, uh, here I'm flying this this male jeer falcon. Look, it's a it's only a 1500 foot pitch on a sage grouse. I wanted it to go higher. Cotogra you know, how many people have you seen who uh, get into the mode of like, maybe they got into falconry um, because for the novelty of excitement of like, wow, I'm unique and different because I have a bird and none of my friends do. Well, now you're in the falconry community and you're like, I have to get the fanciest bird I can to show off to everybody. I have to keep up with the Joneses, but the Joneses are me. I have to keep out doing myself in order to feel relevant or or validated. Um, these, these are very normal human things to have happen. But the, the point is, pursuing excellence is good. It's really good on the one hand. It is good to say, I want a very effective uh, game hawk that has a high kill, high kill count that is very good at catching prey. Or hey, you know what? Uh, I'm normally going after rabbits with these this Harris Hawk. I'm gonna push it and exercise it and try to push to have a catch up in game like a prairie chicken or a pheasant, right? Um, or hey, I've been hunting ducks with my big old Peels Peregrine. Uh, I'm gonna try to push things and, and, and get it to be able to take sage grouse. Those kind of things. That That is good to have the pursuit of excellence to try to do falconry right, to fine tune your craft. Uh, I've always said, you know, we say it's the sport of falconry, but we also say it's the art of falconry. As a sport, it's hunting. It's letting those birds hunt and get out there and fly. It's also an art and we practice the art of falconry. We are artists practicing. And so there is living poetry in all that we do, but we often forget that the longer we're in it. And it's easy to get in a rut, it's easy to get frustrated, and it's easy to not realize the miraculousness and the unique opportunity of what you're actually doing. So that's what I wanna talk a little bit about the other end of it. So I'm not shooting down the pursuit of excellence. I'm not shooting down fine tuning our craft. We should do that. However, I wanna to add to that and say, we should also always remember the joy, the fun of falconry. And what am I talking about that? A falconer who has been doing this a while, there's no novelty to feeding a bird off the fist. You're like, yep, whatever. Here's this hawk. It's eating off the fist. It's eating its meal. And if you go up to almost anybody else in 
almost any community and say, hey, would you like to hold a hog? <gasps> yes, I would. And you can feed it. <gasps> and they have the meat on the glove and they feel the strength as the bird grips on the glove and, and pulls away. They feel the power of that bird and the, they, they experience firsthand the majesty. And again, the living poetry that is all raptors. And they're just like tearing up and it's this amazing experience. Guess what? It's always that amazing. But because falconers get blasted into a Harry Potter world, if you're some Harry Potter fan and you've read all the books, you've read all the, watched all the movies or whatever, you know, by the last movies, things that are normal, you're like, yeah, they're getting on a broom. They're flying to go rescue somebody. Good, whatever. Yeah, brooms are a thing. It's like, these are, you know, it's a, obviously fiction, but I'm like, these are people flying on a broom. That should still be mind-blowing. And guess what? It is mind-blowing if it was real. And the fact that what we do with these birds, let's remember what we really do. Birds are not closely related to mammals. Their thinking is very different than us. And especially if they come from the wild, to build trust is, is against all the rules. It's like, no way. If falconry didn't exist and I pitched it, yeah, you see all those birds out there? Yeah, you can catch one of them and build trust within maybe even just a week or two and be training it to hunt and fly free and come back. People are like, never gonna happen, no way. And yet it does. So I think it is vital and healthy for a falconer to remember those things. We get um, just jet propelled into the world of falconry once becoming a falconer so quickly that novelty can very quickly wear off. And I think the healthy thing is when that happens is not to just keep seeking novelty, but like, I gotta, I gotta have that rush. I gotta have a fancier bird, a bigger bird. I gotta do something crazier. It's like, it's okay to do those things, but it's also really good to go back and think, be conscientious of what you're actually doing and savor the beauty of it. Savor just flying a bird, flying to the fist. They're like, it's over there. It's flying free and just to have just, there's there's nothing in the world like a red-tailed hawk with no leash on flying across and gently landing on your fist. It's mathematically perfect, aerodynamically perfect, poetically artistic, Perfection, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. Take the time to be in the moment and enjoy and appreciate those kind of things. Even just feeding your bird off the fist. For me, one of the things I like to do is it's okay to be passionate about a species. Everybody who's watched this channel knows how much I love land or falcons. Training a new land or falcon this year, he's, he's coming along really well, but he is not a peregrine and he never will be. He doesn't have the gaminess, the higher intelligence, the da 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 But you know what, he's great. And I love him because he's a lantern falcon. And the fact that he hasn't progressed as fast as a peregrine isn't bothering me because I'm trying to be mindfully in the present and say, wow, this is my favorite species of falcon. This is a, a rooted in the history of ancient and modern Egypt. They're gorgeous, they're fun, this bird is an individual, and I want to just enjoy this journey. Yes, I want to use my experience over all my years to try to have him be successful as quickly as possible, but the fact that he isn't as progressing as fast as a peregrine, rather than being frustrated, I'm just saying, you know what? I'm just enjoying this journey. I'm enjoying the personal development of the mind of this young lantern falcon, and I am enjoying uh, the passion I have for this individual species. Uh, and it's the same thing, you know, whatever you are into, whatever you are passionate about, it's okay. Maybe it's the history. Maybe uh, if you are passionate about uh, Arabian falconry, which has such a long, far reaching history, then maybe flying a sacred falcon, maybe you're like, yeah, you know what? Maybe some other falcon would be uh, better suited for this or that, but maybe you want to fly a saker and you're like, I'm just enjoying it because it is a saker. It is an emblem of history. And just savor that. Just savor that experience of working with a bird and developing that relationship and just having fun. Rather than trying to pursue the novelty of, of uh, it's got to be over the top extravagant, it's okay to just have fun. 
hunting simple quarry. And again, I am never shooting down the pursuit of excellence, but I am just trying to advocate for having fun in the sport. Have fun with your mistakes and your misadventures. When a bird does poorly, rather than pulling out your hair, be like, why am I even doing this? Enjoy the friendships you have in your falconry community, laughing about how badly a bird did, and therefore maybe how badly you did that day, rather than ripping on yourself and saying, oh, geez, I feel like I'm failing and just ruining it. You know, it's okay to troubleshoot and learn where do you need to improve, but laugh it off and laugh together with your friends about the misadventures of falconry. This life is a short life. We're not here all that long. And it doesn't matter whether you believe in an afterlife or not. Well, I mean, that's up to you to believe. But my point is that even if there is an afterlife or even if there's not an afterlife, this life is a gift. And very few people, statistically, by the numbers, get to practice falconry. We're talking about training animals that can fly. Like you see amazing things dog trainers do and it's like one thing they're never worried about is their dog fly, <laughs> flying away, okay? It's like you've got the realm of three dimension with raptors, with falconry, we're letting them fly. You are training a companionship with a flighted animal, with a feathered dinosaur, and you're training it to hunt. Like, how amazing is that? And so my encouragement here is try to enjoy it. Try to have fun with your experience with your bird. And also remember to have fun with the people around you. Sometimes falconers get very arrogant and, and competitive and mean-spirited and bitter. That's human nature. But you know what? We all share in common a passion we have for these birds. And that's one of the best things I've had over the years. Some of the friendships I've made by the mutual uh, love of these birds. And I have to say too, you know what? Here's what humans do all over the world. They're fighting, they're inviting. You're different than me. Well, you're different than me. I hate your country's politics. Well, I hate your country's politics. You know what I love? Is that it doesn't matter what country in the world. I can talk to any falconer in any country and just talk birds. And it's like, hey, sacred falcon this and that. Yeah, sacred falcon this and that. Oh, hey, goshawk this and that. <laughs> oh yeah, well, goshawk this and that. I love that. It's fun. It's rich, it's enjoyable, and it's unifying. And that is worth celebrating in my mind. And that is worth returning to. So even if we're over here pursuing excellence, pursuing excellence, oh, I got, I got a, this really fancy bird. I got, I got a white yeah, Siberian goshawk. Awesome. I hope to get one someday too. Um, you know, but my tiny male Finnish goshawk right now, I'm gonna have a blast with. You know what? And you have fun with that white goshawk. I'll have fun with my Finnish Gossag, and let's talk. Let's chit chat. Let's talk about the differences, the similarities, and have fun. When they have success, let's, let's laugh about it and enjoy it. When we make mistakes, let's troubleshoot through it and say, wow, isn't this great? Then instead of talking about the stock market, instead of talking about what color you're painting your house, or instead of talking about what some jerk did at your office job, we're sitting here having a conversation about birds of prey, flying dinosaurs that we've trained and that we're working with. These are the the, the problems you have as a falconer are the coolest falcon are the coolest problems a person can have, right? And the strangest. Again, just like it just like it's some Harry Potter world where it's like, oh no, we're we're out of, you know, we're we're out of werewolf whiskers for this potion. And it's what it's like. It's like, oh, shoot, I'm out of frozen quail. I'm going to have to order some more. Frozen quail for what? Well, to train my, my, my lanner falcon. That, you know, just like, it's so unique. It's wonderful. So always remember, no matter where you are in your falconry journey, because remember, in the beginning, you're exploding into this world, and it's the same thing. You're like, whoa. Always take the time to step back and remember what you're really doing and to enjoy it, to find the fun. The fun is always there. No matter how bored you may get or no matter how old hat it may seem to feed a bird off the fist, it is spectacular. It is miraculous. It is fun and it is amazing. And it's right there. Just the fact that you get used to it, the novelty disappears and you think it's no longer fun. It is still fun. Find the joy that's still there. Find the enjoyment of savoring the beauty that is the sport of falconry. 
So I know this was a little, I don't want to say preachy, but a bit philosophical, but I, you know me, I have deep philosophical thoughts. And again, my friend Steve encouraged me to uh, bring up this topic. Uh, I'll be revisiting this again soon with a, in, a, in a very different way. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. Uh, again, it really does help me build this channel and keep it up and running. Uh, it doesn't seem like it probably, but I put a lot of work to trying to, to put these things together. And uh, let me know down below in the comments what you would like to see or hear. And please share with everybody on here what things bring you the most joy, happiness, and fun in this sport. Like what is fun about falconry to you in your personal experiences and your years of doing what you're doing? So, uh, but again, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, and as always, my friends, happy hawking.